Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Mike here. It's a little late Saturday night. Had a really busy day. Uh, little Hunter has actually had to go to the doctor. He's doing good. So it's a really crazy day for me, but I've been uh, tracking the tropics. We're going to do a quick little video here tonight. Uh, and then we're going to be live on Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern also. And we'll look at all the models from overnight tomorrow and really get into things. Uh, we're talking about this spot in the Atlantic. Uh, here's what it looks like right now. Uh, the NHC has got it at 80 percent. Pretty high confidence this thing's going to develop. Um, we're just waiting on a really true center right now. There's no spaghetti models because there's no true center. So we don't have uh, spaghetti models yet. Uh, but I'm going to show you all the individual model runs here, what we're looking at. And, uh, man, we got some amazing uh, rain totals today for folks in Puerto Rico and uh, some, some of Hispaniola. But Puerto Rico just getting hammered with rain in the last few days today especially. There's a lot of juice down here. And uh, this is pretty much where our system is going to bubble northward. Um, a lot of precipitable water, and uh, yeah, this is it. This is uh, the models have been slowly getting more aggressive, um, and uh, it's gonna be something to watch uh, going into Florida and the southeast. Uh, we keep talking about this zigzag little pattern here, and uh, this this is pretty high confidence. We're gonna have uh, a system go north. There's a high pressure to uh, above. It, it's gonna leave almost nowhere to go. So what we're seeing here is this this system is gonna run into a high pressure. And uh, high pressure winds are pretty much are going to steer this west, which is uh, very odd. Normally, the systems this time of year come up on the other side of Florida and go east. This system is going to hit a high pressure. It's going to get pushed towards Florida. Uh, timing is, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. Um, this is almost a, a double edged sword here. Uh, the first the first thing that we got to worry about here is this uh, persistent wind that's going to be coming in towards the top of uh, Florida here. Uh, not really even associated with whatever happens with our system, but we're seeing this um, in, on all the models here starting pretty much Monday. But Tuesday, look at this. These are strong winds rolling in off the Atlantic Ocean. Unfortunately, each run they're getting faster and faster. This is Tuesday, uh, 8 p.m. This is separate from our developing system, by the way. This is a, a clash between that high pressure and low pressure. These winds are going to create a tight little pressure gradient. Uh, so very high concern about beach erosion. Uh, you know, they've been going door to door, handing out flyers in, in, in certain counties and um, cities here along the uh, Florida coast because of this persistent winds. And here, here, here it is, man. I mean, Tuesday, we're going to have a, a new moon. Wednesday, a new moon or a full moon, not a new moon, full moon. Um, that means higher tides than normal. Uh, so we were about seven, eight o'clock on Tuesday night. We have another high tide uh, Wednesday morning about the same time frame, seven to eight o'clock in the morning. So that's that's the first thing we're watching is this uh, just pounding of waves and winds uh, just going to unfortunately tear up those beaches even more uh they've, they've experienced a lot of beach erosion during ian a lot of homes are condemned right now or, or on the on the verge of condominium so this is going to be a big story let me tell you uh, another big story could be developing is the saint john's river here and a constant push could uh, create some sort of a river surge for the saint john's so we got two things we're worried about here first we got this persistent winds uh later monday tuesday wednesday and then secondly, we got the storm here. Now, I'm going to show you all the models. First off, this is the uh, European uh, tropical storm um, probability map. That's the highest colors we have seen. So very high confidence this thing is going to be possibly named, almost guaranteed. Uh, this is the mean of all the ensembles, and, and the tracks are very, very consistent on all of our models. The big question, which I'm going to show you, is does it do that there? Does it do that? Or does it go through Florida and then come back? So we got a zigzag coming. It's going to do that. The big question is, is, is when this turn comes. We have a big front coming down next week. Cool weather is on the way, by the way. The end of next week, we got 40s and 50s dipping down into Florida even. So we got a strong front that's going to pick this up, shove it out of here. Could still be an East Coast problem. Not meaning to ignore y'all, but we got to worry about Florida first. This thing could scoot the coast as this front comes. So don't take your eyes off of this Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, even Virginia. This thing could hug the Gulf Stream and maybe clip y'all on the way out. And we're going to see that all, all in the models here. Here's the latest Euro Ensembles. Um, these are all the different members, but you can see this zigzag. Uh, some of them are going through the state. Now, notice blue is anything in the 980 to 999 range. That's 
basically hurricane strength. Um, we, we're seeing a lot more blue. Yesterday, we saw three or four of the 51 members. Today, we saw about eight. Now, we're seeing a lot. Uh, so, the big question mark is, is, like I said, some are curving maybe a little bit by the East Coast, but a lot of them are going into the Gulf and coming back. And that's kind of what the GFS was showing, which could be a double whammy for Florida, triple whammy. We got that win. We got initial landfall in South Florida. Then we might have a secondary landfall a little bit farther north on the west central side. So that's a real scenario on the Euro. Uh, because that high pressure is so strong, uh, it won't have any time to react to that front. So big timing in play here. This is like eight of last year. We got a, or two years ago. We got a zigzag coming and 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 a lot to watch. So here's all your latest models on tropical tidbits. Let me just go through them really quick. Uh, here's our developing system. This is on Tuesday morning. Uh, I'm going to show you the water temperatures are warm. I'm going to show you why this is possibly going to happen because it, it, Mother Nature doesn't know it's uh, November. <laughs> so here's the latest GFS uh, 990 over the Bahamas. This is on uh, Wednesday night. Uh, it strengthens it to 984. That, that's strong. And look, the latest 18Z kind of hugs the coast, but gets awfully close to the East Coast. One run, GFS, eh, you know, can't get too sold on the GFS. The fact that the GFS is like, a, you know, getting close to the same zigzag, it's important to note. Uh, the other models here, CMC Canadian, doing a good job. Here's uh, Wednesday morning, 992, 990, 987. It's also just hugging uh, the East Coast and uh, possibly in the South Carolina. So you can see this curve coming. Big question. CMC hasn't done a good job with track history this year. GFS either. So, you know, we got to, with all those European ensembles, we have to really uh, keep in mind that there's going to be a chance of this thing, you know, coming out. T tonight's models are going to be key. Uh, we're, we're hoping to start seeing consistency. We have a consistency on the zigzag. We don't have consistency yet. We know the high is in place. We know the front's coming. Um, let's see the latest icon. Uh, it drops it down to 991, 990. Starts that little hook here, riding right up the side of Florida. And uh, same deal. Here's Wednesday going into Thursday morning. Um, and the latest Euro just came out. It only runs out 90 hours, and it's down to about uh, 1,000 millibars now. So it's dropped. Every run of the Euro is dropping a little bit more pressure. Uh, but it's still hooking uh, towards that south florida possibility landfall um in the uk to note uk did a really uh good job tracking eon it's showing a 999 1000 millibar system uh turning up through the state so that's that's good good high confidence right now um tonight's models are going to be key i'll be live in the morning uh but definitely be watching this florida we got the initial uh worry in the north middle with the winds and then we got to worry about a potential landfalling name system and some of these models are are saying maybe a hurricane so we got to watch that um you know and, and again a couple of the models have it coming out here coming back and and that would be you know double landfall so that's still a real possibility the water temperature is real quick um this is precipital water real quick i want to show you this this is the amount of moisture in the air um, we saw that with the funneling of all that rain over puerto rico Lots of moisture that uh, this thing's going to be feeding off of, uh, adding to those rain totals in Florida, inland flooding. But as far as the ocean heat content, we still have a large patch here of warm, hot, deep water that this is going to be able to fuel off of. And the water temperatures are here, which is still 84.5, uh, 84, 84, um, you know puerto rico 84 so it's got 83 84 degrees in this big region right here um to uh to work with and the shear shear maps still appear kind of light uh, possibly uh middle part of next week this is the gfs here um shear could not uh could could be light enough to allow you know some intensification so mother nature doesn't know it's november the water temperatures are hot and it feels hot out there so we got to watch this close all right Hope that made sense. The zigzags in play. The coastal flooding is definitely in play. Uh, we could have a landfalling um, storm next week for somebody. So uh, I'm on it. We'll see you in the morning. Have a great evening. All right. Bye bye.